I'm hopping on here a little bit early this morning. Um, there have been a couple of people that have told me that they're having some problems with the sound and I wanted to be sure that it's not coming from this end so I spent some time yesterday afternoon working on our audio mixer and uh, our microphone and I would appreciate it very much if those of you who are getting on here early and seeing that I'm here early as you get on if uh, you would let me know uh, what the sound is like. Uh, I think I had one that told me the volume was very low and then I had a couple that were telling me that, uh, that I was cutting in and out. And so if I'm cutting in and out or if the volume is low, please let me know on that. Uh, but we appreciate your help. We want to be a quality stream for you, a quality devotion time. So please let me know if those things are here. Well, it's 715. Today is Friday, April the 3rd, 2020. And Governor Bill Lee announced Thursday afternoon that he was has signed the Executive Order uh, 23, which requires that Tennesseans stay at home unless they're carrying out essential activities. Let's pray and we'll dive into our devotion this morning. Father, we thank you for the new day that you have given us. We pray for wisdom in the decisions we make and all that we do. May our minds, uh, our hearts, our our total being be focused on you and your love for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, uh, as we begin to think about today and we begin to think about prayer, I asked yesterday if any of you had questions on prayer to feel free to um, uh, either message me or to email me at jpierce at toweringoaks.org a couple of things about prayer is that it's a word that a lot of people use and we throw it around so lightly and so easily we always say well I'm praying for you I'm praying for this I'm praying for that and I'm not sure that everybody has the same definition of prayer and so uh, we want to talk about what prayer is because for some people uh, prayer is nothing more than expressing a, a wishful thinking of what they're hoping uh, for some, they don't understand prayer and praying, and yet the Bible is very clear. Uh, we are commanded to pray. Jesus uh, talked about it, and it's something that we all ought to be doing in praying. And so I'm, I'm going to have you look at a couple of scriptures with me this morning that talk about Jesus praying and uh, the command that we have to pray. And uh, if you'll follow along with me, I think you'll find these interesting. And then we'll just briefly talk about a definition for prayer. In Matthew 5, 24, we read, uh, But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Then we read in chapter 5, and I sort of highlighted this for you so you could see it. And when you pray, you are not to be as hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the street corners in order to be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full, but when you pray, go into your inner room, and when you have shut the door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. We read there that Jesus assumes that we will be praying, so it's very important that we understand what prayer is. Uh, we will probably look at a later devotion how the disciples came to Jesus and said Lord teach us to pray in uh, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 22 and all things you ask in prayer believing you shall receive what a great promise that is what does it entail what is prayer all about how about uh, Acts chapter 2 in verse 42 they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and in fellowship, to breaking of bread and to prayer. Prayer is such a dominant thing. In Philippians chapter 6, one of my favorite verses, be anxious for nothing, but pray about everything. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Colossians chapter 4, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. And then finally, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, 
tells us that we are to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That is so important that we pick up on these things and we understand not only that Jesus expected us to pray, he commanded us to pray, and therefore it is very important that we understand what prayer is. I have heard someone say that prayer is simply talking to God. But I believe that prayer, uh, that may be a good definition, but it's not the best praying, is, uh, is a conversation, not a, a monologue, but a, a dialogue. And so much of our prayer is us just talking to God without allowing God to talk to us. So prayer is talking things over with your Heavenly Father and getting His views and His plans and carrying out those plans with His grace and ability and wisdom. That's why I think that it's essential if you're going to have a proper prayer life that your prayer also involve an open Bible and that you be in the Bible. One theologian put it this way. He said the essential act of prayer is not the bending of God's will to ours, but the bending of our will to His. Uh, in other words, the, the Christian prayer is not, please do for me what I want, but please do in me and with me and through me what you want. Uh, when Jesus was teaching His disciples to pray, He taught them to pray, not my will, uh, according to our will, but what we want on earth, but what is in heaven. Uh, we'll look at that prayer maybe a little bit later. You see, as we get to know someone, when we're getting to know someone, we talk to them an awful lot, trying to learn all we can about them in our talking with them. And so as we get to know God, and when you love somebody, communication is essential. And it's not always trying to get them to do our will and what we want. It's us wanting to know what they want so that we can fulfill that relationship and doing what they desire. God made us, and God knows what's best for us, and we want to come to a relationship with Him, that we love Him with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And because we love Him and have that love relationship, and we know that He made us and knows us intimately better than we know ourselves, that we trust Him. And when we trust Him, we can give ourselves to Him in such a way that we know His will for us is what we desire for ourselves. But so many times our praying is praying, Lord, we want you to bend your will to ours rather than knowing that you know what's best for us. We'll talk more about this later. Don't forget if you have any questions to please go ahead and you can either uh, contact me by uh, instant messenger on here or you can email me at jpierce at toweringoaks.org and we will do our best to answer those questions. Today, what is prayer? Prayer is a conversation. It's a two-way street. Let's pray and then we will uh, see if there's anything else that uh, we'll see who all is on here and talk to you for a second. Father, we love you. We thank you that you made us and you know our inner heart, you know our minds, you know our thinking. Father, we pray that we would submit our will to yours, that even as our Lord and Savior prayed in that garden, not my will but thine be done, that we will pray the same thing, that we'll be able to say with the Apostle Paul, that I live, yet not I, but Christ lives through me. Father, we pray that we would honor you in all that we say and all that we do in our living. And Lord, that we would trust you, not just for heaven when we die, but for the everyday decisions we make. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Let's see who all was on here today and see if we can find out who's on here. Let's see. Michael Vogt, it's good to see you on here, son. I hope that you're joining often. Uh, Margie Crum, Richard Scheich, good to see you guys. Dorothy, I'm glad you made it this morning. Let me know if the sound is any better today than it has been. Cheryl, good to see you. Lance and Jana, glad you're with us. Stephen Waldrop, you're up and out. I hope you're working hard. Uh, John and uh, Gina, it's good to see you on here. Uh, Becky Fancher, uh, Becky, it's good to see you. We have uh, Frida, Melanie Taylor. 
up in Kentucky. Good to see all of you. Please don't forget to text me or to uh, message me or email me if there's particular things about the subject of prayer that you're wanting me to hit in these morning devotions. Uh, we will be live streaming from church this Sunday morning on Palm Sunday, and I'm going to be talking about Palm Sunday, talking about the glory of the cross. Easter Sunday morning, we're looking for a special sunrise service at 7 o'clock. Uh, people can drive in and uh, listen to the message on their FM radios in the back parking lot at the church and not have to violate the stay-at-home order. Uh, keep your windows rolled up. We're looking for a good time together as our Lord uh, reigns supreme, and we're wanting to find every way possible that we can worship Him, not only individually, but together as a church. Don't forget, church, you're on our hearts, uh, and uh, you're in our hearts and on our minds, and we love you. I hope you have a great day. Valerie, good to see that you got on here. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless.